I can criticize anybody though. <laughs> the decisions they made in their career and stuff they did and way they messed them up that they could have they could have wiggled when they could have wagged. Um, she had coach anybody's work, you know. Presidency work is some work, man. Uh, but then I know that some people get higher, get a B. Some people get a C. Some people get a D minus. Some people get an F. Now I get a brother, at least a B plus, man. Yeah, he messed up with Gaddafi. But I painted the bra anyway, Obama back there. Because he the only brother with some melanation in the United States that been in the office. Period. <laughs> they can't trace their ancestry. Well, part of his answers, I guess, can go back to Europe, but part of it go right dead to the center of Africa. <laughs> so I ain't going to complain about it, man. It's better than none. Better than no black presidents. You know, a lot of people, you know, when, the, when people can make you hate your own people, that's some pretty powerful people right there. <laughs> you know? They can kind of, you know, it's... You ain't got but one dude that you even that your folks even got anywhere, you know? And then they make you hate on that dude, man. Come on, man. We gotta stop, man. Gotta stop doing that. <laughs> Just don't say nothing. My mom said, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all. <laughs> Just keep your mouth shut, you know? <laughs> you know, but I got Barack Obama right there. Some people don't like him. I don't care, you know. I'm going to put out the people I like. I like Nip, I like Tupac, and I like Obama. <laughs> Just because I do, you know. I don't care if nobody else don't. I'm the painter, so I painted them, you know. Yeah. And I got Haru. And ha Haru, the first kings and queens, they built civilization. Namara, his name wasn't Normer. It's Namara. Because you can see the Ra Falcon in his name if you study the hieroglyphics or Metternature. You see Ra in his name. So his name was Na, but you got to understand what that means. Ma, Ra. Okay. He was the first king. He united the lower of the upper kingdom, which was the south. So you turn the planet upside down. That's the proper orientation of the, of the, of the universe. The south pole is on top, not the north pole. I'm going to say it again. The South Pole is on top. Not the North. It's cold in the North. You can go on land mass as far as you want to go South. And it's still going to be warm. <laughs> you know, you're in South Africa. Even if you go to, uh, maybe it get a little bit cool in certain parts of uh, South America. Down there by Argentina. But it's still fairly warm. But if you go to Scandinavia, it's going to be three feet of snow, man, most of the time, about five months out of the year. <laughs> you know? Some places, uh, you know, north, I say France, and even in France, it's going to get rather rather chilly, rather cold. They're going to get some snow and stuff. Uh, in America, the, the place that uh, people other than Portuguese and Spanish settled was Canada and North America. When it start getting past Florida, it start getting a little too hot on a regular basis. Those are not places you're going to settle. You're going to settle in places that's a little bit more user friendly to your particular uh, climatal preferences, you know. However, um, I have my shirtless brothers here. Haru and Ra, another version of Haru. Falcon, Paradise Falcon. Pyrenees Falcon. There's an hourglass. There's wine. The thinking man. He's thinking. There's earth below. So it's time. Some judgment is coming on this thing, man. The Ra, the sun, gives all life. It also can take it away by removing its power. <laughs> Everything tracks the sun. All plants. You look at the plants, they track the sun through the sky. So um, <coughs> I'll put some glazes on the legs real quick. I'm just going to use this sable brush. I'm using a flat number 12. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, burnt uh, sienna mixed with a, with a little bit of uh, white, a little bit of yellow ochre, just a little bit with a little bit of medium. And I'm just going to glaze, right? A nice little glaze layer 
right over this. Let's get this a nice little glazing. This is how I build up my patinas, by the way. And I'm not putting a whole lot. This is a really, really micro thin layer of, of just really just adding a little bit of a, a tone or luster. It's kind of giving this a little bit more of a satin finish. And it's transparent because I have more medium in it than actual pigment. So this is not a layer that's meant to cover at all. This is just a layer that's meant to tone somewhat tone and this is what I start doing when I get into my later you know when you paint in the ways of the old masters with this layer after layer after layer you know as opposed to just painting it all at once when you just kind of want to add some tone layers to it you just tone then when you finish toning you tone some more then after you tone some more you tone it one more time <laughs> And you just keep toning till you can't, till you can't tone. That's the song. Keep doing it till you can't. You know what's that song? Uh, doing the butt. <laughs> you know. Keep doing it till you can't do it no more. I don't know. I forget them songs, man. Those are good songs, though. <clears throat> they certainly were. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, with the same brush. I'm going to just add a little bit more to the shadow just with a little gloss in there. Just build like a, a shadow in there a little bit. Then I'm, I'm going to wipe this and then I'm going to add a little bit of that burnt sienna. I'm going to go right alongside that shadow and I'm going to just soften it down. Almost like a watercolor effect. There we go, soften that down. Okay, so now I keep saying I was gonna paint the uh, chair <laughs> because it's too crude compared to the rest of the painting. Now I think I'm gonna finally go in on the chair. So let me put these brushes back in my poquito. Oh, we got somebody that's, uh, we got somebody else waving. Lahar Zen Tim. Hey, what's up, man, my brother's from Asia. What's up, my brothers? Are you from Africa? Hold on, it's Africa or Asia. Where we at now? What's up, bro? Anyway, whatever the name is, Lazar Zen Tim. How you doing, bro? Good to see you here. Glad you could be here checking me out, man. I appreciate you coming. So I'm just adding some glazes just to bring out the tone a little bit. Just want to do it. This is not really oiling. It's sort of oiling, but I'm kind of um. I want to enhance some of these tones a little bit in here, and I'm kind of doing it mostly with a a, 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 a raw sienna, I mean burnt sienna color. And I'm just putting a, a thin glaze of that over top what I already got here. A nice thin layer. That's a little bit of a glaze. Get that nice look. Built up different layers where you're seeing some translucency to these layers underneath. You see these tones underneath here. You can see it's just a, a little, I mean, that one piece of oil, even though it seemed like I might have had my brush loaded down. I'm stretching that oil all over this this area of this leg, so it's a lot. It's a lot. It, a little is going a long way. That's how I'm getting this the satiny finish, you know, on it or the uh, the luster. Now, if it's too much, what I do is I have these really nice old T-shirts that make great art rags, and I just go in and I just kind of just touch here and there where I feel like it. Just a little slight touch, that's all it is. Pull some of it back here and there. Just pull a little bit back. It might not need as much in certain places. I back up from it, I see another little place that just is getting too much. I'm just gonna just pull it back off of that. Or just kinda, maybe just blend it with the t-shirt. The t-shirt creates a 
different kind of a, a smear effect, a smudge that I like. <clears throat> uh, I could continue this into the other leg and I shall probably. Just for consistency between the different, between the different elements. Just so that one element don't look like one thing and the other element look like something else. I'm going to first follow along the, the skirt pattern just to kind of test the tone in an area that's kind of close to something else. You just don't notice it as much. Then I'm just going to try to move it in. If I like it, then I'm going to go back to my palette and reload with some more of that. And I'm starting to run low on my my burnt, burnt sienna. So I'm going to put a little bit more on. Don't want to run low on that. And uh, I think I got the right, about the right consisting. I'm going to start underneath here, again, near this chair, because I'm going to work on that next. And that's a, too much tone I got loaded in here. I want a little bit more medium, a little bit less tone. So I'm wiping some of the medium on a clearer part of my palette. Wiping some of the tone off, I should say. Because I don't want too much tone. I just want a glaze, man. I just barely want that glazed. Because I want it to really be transparent. And it's basically, I'm distributing this over the entire series of colors just to kind of tone the whole thing. And, you know, create that, you know, the old master's effect. Now this, this leg, the, the color of brown that's here is already dry. It's already like at least 72 hours worth of dry. It's probably about twice that, it's about 144 hours of dry, a setup in it. And I do like that, I'm gonna grab some more of that tone. And I'm gonna just make sure it's even now. I'm gonna scumble it a little bit because it seems like scumbling is if something looks good, I'm going to keep doing it, you know. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to grab some more. I'm going to pick up some more medium. I'm going to pick up some more of that burnt sienna and get just the right amount. Now I'm just getting like a quarter inch or so. That will be five centimeters for the people who are metric. On the tip of this 12, number 12, sable hair flat brush. And I'm just kind of like uh, moving this kind of burnt sienna with 70% uh, gal kit, 70% gamsol in my medium. I'm not using any linseed oil at this level. Probably starting um, tomorrow, I'll probably start mixing 20% uh, linseed oil with 30% uh, gal kit and then 50% gamsol. A little bit more fat. But for right now, because I want to start building up the luster, I've already started it with this leg. And I could put some luster into the torso area too. And again, I'm going to get, and I got too much Gamsol, not enough. Because I dipped in the Gamsol instead of dipping in my medium. And uh, do I want a little glaze? I think I'm going to go in the tummy area here. And just put a little bit like in here. I usually get like a dark area to kind of test out my glaze before I actually move the glaze into other tones. And you know, and this is just gonna just give it some fresh tackiness. Cause I'm probably gonna paint into this again tomorrow. Now I'm gonna take this glaze, what I have left on it. And I'm really liking that as I go over. Again, I'm gonna just dab it in a little bit of medium, which is 30% gal kit. 70% Gamsol, and just a little bit of um, a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna. Now I'm going into this really dark tone with this, and I'm just kind of going over the existing colors with this. It's already dry. These colors are at least 72 to 177 hours of dry. And what I'm doing is just building up another layer on top of the, maybe my third or fourth layer already. And those other layers just didn't have as much 
medium in it or just as much oil or whatever it was it had enough in it but and I could go in closer later to get like around the difference between this shadow between this uh, this collar here but I'm really trying to focus on the skin tones right now really just doing this to kind of see if where my skin tones are going this 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 little blaze is just, just making all my skin tones, different colors that I applied in the past, is making them all have the same amount of reflexivity, which is a, a satiny type of finish. Some of the areas might have been a little bit more flat. Some of the areas might have been a little bit more slightly, not really a gloss, but a slightly more of a, of a maybe just a little bit of a hint of a gloss on them. Because I'm trying not to get too glossy I was trying not to get too glossy too quickly. And in some of these areas where the colors are a little cool, I'm warming them up. Like in this shoulder here, I got a little bit more burnt sienna on this glaze right here <clears throat> because I just want to warm that up a little bit more. Again, I don't have much oil in it. It's more, mostly Gamsol, 70% Gamsol, with a little bit of pigment and I'm using only uh, burnt sienna because a lot of times with certain glazes when you especially when we already got some modeling underneath it can get too much when you start mixing and blending this and, and it could be good now it could be good but in this case I want to really this this layer is a unification layer right here so basically, I want to unify all of the different painting I've done on different days into one flat surface that I could paint on in the future when I just start adding more highlights and tones. But you can see what it's doing to this arm. It's just really making this arm, the modeling comes forward more because it's raw and it just makes give it a little bit more of tone. It's a little bit more of a tone kind of thing happening. Uh, bringing it in. So I'm going to get a little bit more of that for this forearm area. Okay, that's going to make that skin tone pop forward. Pop forward right there. So I want to get it in everything. I'm going to make that pop forward. And it's just going to make it all harmonize, go together. We could all go together. Cohesion in the piece. Bring some cohesion in the actual painting. And I'm going to hit this with a little bit more of this in this forearm. And I'm going to grab a little bit more. It's working, so I'm gonna keep going with that. Again, I'm using burnt sienna, 30% galkit. I'm gonna grab this hand too. This hand is looking kind of pale right here. And uh, I'm gonna hit this with this glaze. And this, the idea of this glaze is just to take everything like a tone darker and in the red direction, in the burnt sienna kind of direction. And I'm putting this on, I guess I'm putting it on, not necessarily flat, because in some areas I'm scumbling it more, but I'm making sure the finish in terms of what oil is sitting where, I'm making sure that's even. But where the pigment is in terms of the burnt sienna, some areas get more, you saw me apply a rag to a person portion of the legs. And then, you know, depending on how it's loaded in my brush, I can press more or less and get more of the burnt sienna on to certain places where I'm painting because now I got experience doing that brushing back and forth so and so the whole idea here is just to kind of <clears throat> tone it I'm like, there's a little bit of brown as it turns from the Pyrenees Falcon to the, the actual skin tone uh, thing I could have painted that calf a little bit better smoother now I am going to do that later but for right now I want to get all of the tones of the body in agreement with each other. And this is the way I do it. Just add, I start adding glazes. 
start adding. This is the point where I start glazing and highlighting and low lighting and stuff like that. And it starts turning away from being a painting, you know, kind of gestural. And it starts to take on that kind of renaissance -y, fancy color kind of, kind of attitude, you know. The colors, the paints start getting embroiled into the, the patina. I mean, just the quality of the actual way the paint sits on there. And I like to do that through glazes. This is where the fun starts for me. <laughs> because I can really just get into, I can really just get into these glazes really nice, you know? I mean, at this level, it's, well, I still don't, can't do the glazes to the pedestal yet. I still got some more to do down there. Uh, I got a bunch of paint to do here, but I gotta wait till that yellow dries. I gotta clean up my wonky looking sun a little bit. <laughs> and I gotta definitely tighten up my daggone Paradis Falcon. But there's a lot of things that need to be tightened in this, but this is coming along. I do see some places where, on the other days when I was doing the um, painting on the, on the Falcon, on the, on, the, on, the, on the feathers, I did not hit the shadows underneath this arm here. Now that I'm looking in this area, I really do need to tone some things down some here because it needs to be some more shadowy in here. And these shadows, I, I, I missed it. And I don't want them too dark. You know, I kind of do want them dark, but since it is kind of being under, I, want, I think I want to get a little bit of, I'm get some titanium white, hit a little bit of that Mars black in there. And of course, I got my medium kind of brown now with a little bit of Burnt Sienna in there. But it's okay because I got some blue in this black, Mars black too. And maybe I don't want that, but I think I do see blue back there. So I'm just going to let that be like that. I'm going to go over to some of this black here that has a little bit of raw umber in it, get it more neutral. What I want to do is just, uh, just want to put down a couple of swashes here and there. Kind of test where I am, you know, in terms of tonalities. Okay. And I kind of see that. And now I got to figure out how I'm going to tackle up in this thing. So, what I'm going to do is uh, wipe off my brush. I'm going to get to pick up some dark tones. And I'm kind of almost not adding a lot of medium because I'm not going to say dry brush this, but I just, just want to tone down to create some, some, some shadowy modeling tone. I don't want the tone so dark, but I don't want it not dark enough either. I don't really want it black. I just want it dark gray for now. I'm hoping that's gonna be enough. If not, I can always go back in with some more black. And I just need to, uh, I think I still see blue in there somewhere. So I'm just going to go in to these white areas and see what I can do in here. And so I think I'm going to hit that like that. Because I, when, when I'm doing this and I'm unsure, I kind of go back and forth between light and dark, light and dark, until I'm sure about something. And uh, I do, it does kind of look too flat now, and I got to deal with that. I might. And I've been dealing with everything except what I want to deal with. That's the, the chair. And I do that sometimes. I mean, I know I want to work on a certain area, but then I wind up going somewhere else. You know? Don't know why I do that. And do I need to go there? Because evidently it hasn't bothered me because... I've left it this way for a long time. Okay, now what I'm going to do is try to I have a reference, I could paint what I see, but when you like what you got on the canvas too much, 
other than your reference, you you kind of like your canvas better than your reference. That starts to make things kind of hard. And right now, I got some interesting stuff on the canvas. And it's not that I don't know what to paint. It's just that I don't want to change it because I kind of like it too much. And then sometimes you can change something and you never get it back. You know, you change it and it actually makes it worse. And you say, oh, no, I liked it better before. I mean, I should have left it that way, but too late. You've already made your changes. So what I'm going to do now is... It's just keep keep going, keep going here. I've already started, I might as well just keep going. And I'm working on the wings like underneath the behind his, his arms. And this is fresh paint, because this area hasn't been painted since I, really it still has the gestural undercoat, but some I do my gestural undercoats kind of, I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own home, but, horn, but I do it really, really good in that, I do it almost so good that I should just be painting more abstract gestural figurative because I do that really good I went through a period where I really got to be very good at that so what happens is when I start painting a little bit more figurative or realistically um, I get torn you know I get torn I don't know if I want to stay keep the it is a different paint style it's a whole different and I don't want two different paint styles in one painting want to stay consistent and that's the problem when you have multiple styles like I do it's hard for you to stay consistent you know because at least for me anyway because um there's multiple styles that I do you know and uh and I stayed on one multi one style for a very long time because like I said I could do it fast I could kind of support myself off of my paintings and uh, because I could sell so many of them because I could just churn them out. I could just keep churning them. And that's the thing about when you do work that you can churn. It's not necessarily your best work, but you can churn it. So you know what? You wind up getting stuck in that style. Now I have somebody knocking on my door here. I don't know who it is, but they're knocking on my door. I don't know if they know it's coronavirus, but let me say what Taz. Okay, evidently there was a salesperson who just wanted to leave that little pamphlet with me because they heard the word coronavirus before I opened the door. <laughs> but that's a good way to get rid of salespeople, ain't it? Okay, so anyway, I am going to uh, uh, okay, so that I'm liking that. I'm going to eventually get on to this, uh, this bit of, uh, I'm going to get back to this bit of a uh, chair here I need to work on. But for some reason, I started going on to the leg, different things, because I felt that needed to happen. And I'm there looking at it. Okay, so I've done this leg already, and I got enough paint in there to just to let that set up. I want to let that set up. I could try to blend some more. I'll blend it on another time after that dries. But what I'm going to do now with this is I'm going to go in here, start working with some of this, um, working with some of this tone. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have a yellow in there. I'm going to get some cadmium yellow medium. 
just a little bit of cadmium yellow light. And I'm going to mix just a smidge of uh, Viridian Green into it. And it's almost making like a, a, uh, a yellow ochre color, but I'm going to just lean it a little bit more towards green. So it's kind of like a, a mustard green, you know. And then what I'm going to do, because I have black in here, but right around here I want a little bit of separation right here from this darker shadow with that color that I just mixed. I don't want a lot of it. And then I'm going to actually tell you the truth, I want more green in it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stick more with the green than I am with the yellowness of it. Just to add something interesting to my shadow. I don't want just a black shadow or a fading shadow. I want a different color. So I'm going to add this bit of green right here. Just right there. And what I'm going to do is take this Viridian Green, and now I'm going to go into Raw Umber with it. And I will put it right between my black color. It's already dry, by the way. And that lighter Viridian Green that's mixed with, uh, might as well just say Yellow Ochre. I just wanted to pop a little bit more than Yellow Ochre, so I had Cabin Yellow in it. Okay, now that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to just do a little blending right here. Okay, so that's nice. So I'm kind of just establishing how I want this shadow to go. Like I said, I want the shadow to have a little attitude of green. Because I don't have a whole lot of green in this painting at all. And I just want a splash of it, you know. So I'm going to go back to the yellow again. I'm going to add some right down here as it the shadow falls off on this chair. I'm going to pop some of that green yellow. I already have a little hint that I was going to do that on this one. And so I'm going to reinforce that. I'm going to reinforce that. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow uh, burnt umber first to separate it from the black because I do have some yellow load in this brush. Then I'm going to go over to the green. Viridian green, and then I'm just going to blend that in. That's it. Just like that. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, when this shadow comes in, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that Viridian green, and since this is really dark, I'm really going to go to this burnt umber, and I'm going to add some gritted green to that. So it's a little yellow in this, a little burnt umber, but greenish tint, dark greenish tint, dark Viridian green tint. Add a little bit, bit of that to how this shadow hits this chair right here. Now, I do have black on this side, but I want this side to go more to it. I'm going to get some yellow ochre. I'm going to put that inside of the shadow. But then, now that I have that there, I don't want it to be that intense. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to that to knock it down. And just kind of spread it out a little bit. Just to show that there's some wood, but it's dark. But now I'm going to go to my black. Now we just keep the perimeters of that. Just to show a little bit of the burnt, of the wood brown color coming through in the shadow. Then right here, right next to the leg itself, I'm going to just hit with a new fresh thing of black. And this black might have a little oxidon purple in it. There. So now I kind of got that tone set up the way I want. And what I'm going to do is kind of chill right there. I'm going to clean my brush out some so it's not too much influenced by other colors. And I'm going to go over to cadmium yellow medium and some cadmium uh, yellow and some cadmium red medium. And I'm going to try to pick up more cadmium yellow than cadmium red here. Because this tone is a bit yellow now, and I want this tone to be a little bit more orangey. Right here. Not so much yellow. Because the wood is going to have, wood is brown. So I just want it to have an orange glow, not necessarily a yellow glow. Now, I don't know if this is wood or gold. Because like I said, I just picked the color up. I picked an example up, you know, from some antiquities. 
I don't know if this is Kimmy or not, but I picked it up because I thought it had lion paws on it, so I like that. I'm going to take this yellow gold color that I mixed. It has a little bit of all those colors in it. It has a little bit of viridian green. It has a little bit of cadmium yellow medium in it. Cadmium red medium. I'm just going to kind of glaze that. And it has mostly uh, cadmium yellow and cadmium. At this point, right, it's more orangey. And I'm going to just cover over this kind of like line here, the furniture that I have. Because really, in reality, on the actual furniture, there's no line. And then I'm just going to add just a little bit more yellow there to kind of get it more opaque. So just dip straight in the cadmium yellow now. Go on over that kind of orangey browning color. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go a little bit more over to the uh, red end on this side. And the idea is I know that I'm more red than I should be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, burnt umber. And I'm going to go into that red there. And I'm, because I want to kind of streak it to create the effect of the wood pattern. I don't, and I'm letting what the brush does by automatically kind of leaving some very thin. Because I don't, for, at this point, I don't know if it's wood. It looks like wood. Or if it's wood, it looks like a gold leaf wood kind of thrown. But I know the handles are gold, but I don't, I think this, uh, and I know the feet part is going to have a gold leaf effect that I'm going to put on it, but right now I'm painting it as wood. And it has kind of like a stumbled off, like a well-used gold leaf. So I'm going to paint it wood first, and now I'm going to go over to, I don't want to get the colors too muddy at this point. So I'm going to just try to just, I got this darker color on my brush, so I'm going to use it where I think it needs to be. Also coming off of this uh, chair, there's some darker tones, and so I'm gonna get some of these darker tones off my brush by literally putting them on the canvas. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some of this darker tone and blend it with this orange, with this green over here. Because this is a synthetic brush, and it's like, uh, it's not quite a bristle, but it's not quite a uh, sable brush. It's something in the middle. Okay, now I'm going to pick up some uh, orangey color and just kind of paint the bottom of this. Just put a little, little bit of tint of color in there because really there's not a lot of color. There's a whole lot of um, different colors and shadows. That part is going to be somewhat shadowy. Then what I'm going to eventually do is hit this with some... Um, my medium is starting to run low and get dirty. So that's kind of dictating to where I can put tones at and what I can do and what I can paint. And uh, what I need to do is change the medium. But I do see darker areas that I can put uh, raw umber in. So I'm going to just go ahead and paint in while I got this and just use the rest of this medium up. Just painting raw umber where I think it needs to go. Because again, this bit of painting that I've done in this area is quite uh, my first level. It's, it's not as modeled. It's painted good enough. I mean, from where you see it, it looks pretty good. But it's not painted on a realistic level uh, that I would like. So what I'm going to do is go in with this raw umber and just, first of all, build up the paint. In addition to building up the, when I say build up the paint, just put another layer so that that color is just more intense. It's just more presence of it. When you put one layer on top of another, especially when you are you paint into an oil layer, it just builds up. It builds up the paint color more intense because you know it's kind of like put two coats of paint on your wall at home. One coat it looks nice, but but when you hit it with a second coat, it looks better. And when you hit it with a third coat, it just looks better. And it's just the presence of the paint. It's not necessarily the color, because the color is there. It's just that the, the presence, you know, the, 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 just the thickness of the paint looks nice. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm, it's kind of reinforcing tones that's already there. And then at the same time while I'm reinforcing these tones that's already there, I am uh, putting them on just a little bit thicker and I'm modeling them. I'm modeling the paint of the object that I'm painting with light, paying attention to that just a little bit more. 
and I did the first time I kind of gestured it in this time I'm really just looking at the light how it falls off of of the object and just going in and just trying to uh, get that painted now I'm going to go into a little yellow ochre I'm going to start on this side because I need that lighter and I'm just going to again kind of start modeling using the yellow ochre as a lighter tone now the yellow ochre is too yellow this needs some uh, red in it so I'm going to add some cadmium red to that color and some raw umber I mean some burnt sienna and then I'm going to push that color and that's the tone I want that's very nice I like that that's very nice so that looks good that looks good so I'm gonna keep painting and just keep covering that with this tone And just kind of blending that and modeling that and just refining this bit of paint here that's describing this element and now what I'm gonna do is go in with a little bit more raw umber and just throw that paint in there and just work with these shadows work with the blending there that looks good I like that that's already giving me kind of like the tone I want. Now on this side here, where I have this shadow that I put in black or green, I'm just going to reinforce some of this black in here. Now first let me look at the palette and see where my black is. Okay, there it is. Because this is all just dark. And even as this thing kind of goes down here, there's a bit of a shadow. That's really what I'm looking at, is I'm really looking at my shadows now, seeing how they go in there. Okay, that looks good. It's starting to come. Okay, so that's trying to come into play. And now, now that I got this side kind of touched exactly, well not exactly, but very close to what I want. For this particular layer of paint, this is good because it's getting me closer and closer to where I want to be. And that's always a good thing when you're getting, when you're reaching closer to the destiny with your painting. Things are starting to look better and better with the modeling that you add. It just starts to take on the attitude that you're looking for. Okay, so now I'm going to work on this bar going across here, which again, this tone that's on there, I'm going to start out with uh, raw umber. Since the medium I have is running low, I'm going to use all that up. So I'm painting this instead of working on the actual chair because this is actually darker. It's just so I can just, you know, be efficient with my materials. Then I'll clean my medium and then I'll go on to that section up there. But for right now, I'm going to just be right in here where it just doesn't matter if my medium is a little bit dark and dirty. Because it is brown, and this color is that I'm painting is brown. And since this area is kind of shadowy, it just doesn't matter. I'm going to pick up some uh, burnt sienna. And I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow medium and a little bit of cadmium yellow red. I mean, a cadmium red medium. And I'm just going to go and just shift this color closer to where it should be. So right now I got it much lighter as an undercoat. And I'm going to lean a little bit more to yellow. I got it much lighter than it needs to be. I do want it light, so that's why I added a little bit more cadmium yellow in there. Because I do want some like hints of light coming out. But I don't really, this is shadowy. I don't want this to be ultimately where the eye is attracted to. I'm gonna add some cadmium yellow into some burnt sienna right down this bottom end. Just to give it a little bit more of a red tone of wood down here. Okay, and then I'm going to go back up to my uh, 
raw umber. I just put it on sort of heavy where I want it. It's basically on the central bar area here. And what I'm trying to do is describe these shadows. Now, some of this stuff is going to be covered in the fog, so I don't really have to paint it that good. A lot of it is not. Then I'm going to take this uh, raw umber and just drag it into this that ready tone that I made and just blend it to create that 3D model in that uh, piece of wood. And I want it to go back to this kind of like yellowy color and I want to take this color to the edge because this bit of brown at the top, it, I have too thick of a piece there and I don't want that. I want this light color to come all the way to the edge and I'm just going to not paint just a little rim of that raw umber to make it look like a, a nice thin line. And with this, by coming in with yellow over top this raw umber, it creates this like a, like a green brown kind of tone. It's different from the brown tone that's underneath, but lighter than the raw umber. And then what I'm going to do is just model that, blend that until it's, and I want everything to be really subtly blend, blended there, and that's very good. Okay, so now I got that nicely blended. It's nicely blended. Now what I want to do is, um, things is going pretty good with that, and I don't really need some bright colors, so I'm just going to go in here with some yellow, and I'm going to put the highlights on this part of the uh, chair in there, just with just yellow. So I already have an underpaint, so, and again, I might even add some white to that yellow. Let's get that highlight. Yeah, that's it. More in there. And this kind of highlight kind of spreads out. And now I'm painting a little bit, and it's already like a light color, but I'm going to make it a little bit more dynamic because it is brighter. And right now, the color that I had is under color. It kind of has it there. Okay, so then I'm going to take that brighter color. And I don't care if it gets a little muddy because this is not supposed to be really, really light and bright. It's supposed to be kind of subdued anyway, so it's going to naturally subdue it. And I'm just going to paint a little slick line, like the little gloss line on that side right there of the wood. Okay, then what I'm going to do is go get a smaller brush, like a number zero, or maybe even a liner brush. I'm going to go back to my black, and I'm going to pick up the last of this and I might not even have enough medium in here to get this paint flowing the way I want. And I'm just paint these nice dark lines going down here. That got me kind of a dark line, but it's now time to change my medium. Because now it's affecting the way I paint. So, all right, so that's pretty good. I like that. I am going to look at that while I change my little cup. I have somebody else waving. So before I change my medium, I'm going to go see who that is and give, give them a little wave back. And then I'll get back to what I'm doing. Okay, let's see who's waving. A noon, a cat. What's up? How you doing? Uh, I'm in. I should say I'm in. I don't like to say I'm in. I'm in, a cat. So... How you doing? How you doing? Appreciate you coming by. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm liking that. And it's getting in the area. It's not really coming to where I, what I want yet because I didn't get to finish that bit of painting. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into a place for now. Save that for later. Then I want to clean this out with a tissue. Clean out all my mediums again because I need them clean. But I've been able to use all this palette today. I haven't had to, didn't really have a need because I'm painting a lot of different colors and my colors didn't get too dirty today. So I didn't really have to clean my palette at all. So that's good. And, uh, but I have been able to, I had had to clean my medium several times. The good thing about it is I'm not used putting too much medium in there. So by the time my medium gets dirty, it's out and I need to add more fresh medium. 
So again, to do that, it's about a dime's worth of uh, gal kit, and then about a quarter's worth of uh, gamsol, or maybe a 50 cent piece worth of that. And like I said, it produces about 30% gal kit, 70% gamsol. So it's not a whole, whole lot of oil in this mixture. So no matter what I mix, I'm not going to get that much oil, you know, other than what comes from the uh, store in the paint. Just not going to get that much. Uh, that allows my glazes to be really, really thin. And instead of being glossy, more of a satin. And that's what I want. I don't want gloss at this moment. I just want it rich. I want it to be built up rich. And not even really satiny, just a little bit of luster. Just a little bit, just a coat of some kind of luster. Doesn't even have to be a lot because I can always add subsequent coats. I can always add that and build that up. Just one little layer at a time. And all you need is about, you know, three or four or five microns of a thickness to create that jewel like thing. You don't need a whole lot of thickness. I mean, you don't need like a whole millimeter. <laughs> Now, I have done up to two, three millimeters before, but um, it's not necessary, you know? But one millimeter is, it does a very, very nice job. Gives you a very, very rich, deep, deep kind of patina uh, when you build it up. But that's a lot of building up of layers, and I don't know if it's necessary, you know, like a half a millimeter, quarter millimeter. That's more than enough also. So. Now that I kind of done that, I'm going to go back in with clean medium and really try to get this real part of the chair done because I've been doing like everything else except for this part in here. So, um, but I was working on this and I think I'm going to just hit this with this same brush with some orange, put a little bit more cadmium red and a cadmium yellow together, do some more red orange color in here. And just kind of work with this wood tone. Just make that a little bit more interesting. Even though this part of it is going to be kind of covered later, I'm just going to do that just for consistency purposes for now because I already know that that's going to be covered. So it's almost like, what's the point? <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do is go in and start addressing this tone. Because right now i got this big bar going there, and I just don't want that. So I'm going to hit this with some cadmium yellow right over top that wet that I already have. And uh, I'm just going to hit it with that. And then I'm going to even get some cadmium yellow uh, light, hit the bottom with that. And get some more cadmium yellow light and get right in there. So I already have some uh, or plenty of orange there. But now I kind of got the orange at the top and the light color at the bottom. Really should have it the other way around. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is just smooth this out on the canvas, bump it up to that green color that I have, and just try to smooth this whole thing out. Now I could do this with my, um, <clears throat> I could and I should do this with my, um, my palette knife to make sure it's nice and straight, but I guess I should because this is a, it's in the middle of the painting. So I kind of want to, I like the organic feel, but not perfectly straight line, even though you, sometimes you don't even get a perfect straight line with this guy. But let me pull out my Excalibur and do that. Okay, what I'm going to do is load my brush up with some cadmium yellow, a little bit of cadmium yellow red, a little cadmium red. A little bit, bit of uh, yellow ochre to help it cover. Okay, and then I'm going to just lay this in nice and straight right here. And I'm going to paint my straight line in, paint my paint in nice and straight. And a nice covering. Now I got me a nice little line there. So that's good. And I got it more red the way I want. So I'm going to go back in again. Clean all that off. 
on my pants it's also my rag <laughs> and I'm gonna hit that again that's pretty good all right so now um now that I have that I have some things going on actually but I kind of got a little bit too low on this side and what I'm gonna do is I gotta paint that paint the blue back in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same brush because this is a good brush for doing that. I'm going to clean some of the red out. My new Gamsol for cleaning my brushes out. Using my paints as a rag. And then I'm going to mix some blue to match this, uh, like the water or the sky color, whatever I have doing down there. I'm going to start out with some teal blue and I'm going to mix it with a little cerulean blue. Then I'm going to just kind of put it on there first to see where it's going and if it's matching. And it's looking pretty good. I think it needs a little bit of cobalt in there. So I'm kind of doing something with all three colors to get this color. I do want it nice and thick and rich. Sometimes Cerulean doesn't mix as rich. So I usually go with the teal and the uh, cobalt. They cover a lot better. And... I'm going to, again, line my chair up a little bit, get it nice and straight, make sure it's going to be straight because I want it to be straight. I want to have some nice continuity of straightness here. And right now I don't have it, so now I need it, so I'm going to paint it in. The idea is this is the cover where it didn't cover well. And I can already see with that color I kind of got it straight, but I need some more cobalt blue. What I'm gonna do with this is just, I got a line, I'm just gonna just hit some cobalt blue in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna make a new mix here. This time with more cobalt blue in the mix. I'm gonna go more with cerulean, less teal. Okay, that's pretty good and just get it kind of like a thick melted milkshake consistency and we're just going to try to find where this thing needs to be and I kind of let my palette slip a little bit shouldn't have done that but it's still got a straight line out of it so it's okay okay now I'm probably going to have to paint this in some succession here but I want to look at my pictures because I don't want it to be too much different than my reference here because this is where my world is going to be And uh, so, I gotta sit there and look at it for a minute. Okay, kinda looked at it enough. I'm gonna go into my teal. I'm just gonna grab the teal. I'm gonna put that on real nice and thick right in here. Kinda blend it with what I already have there. And I think I'm gonna take this teal to kinda smooth it into what I already have existing. So we don't see too much of a of a difference there. Okay, and that's pretty good. Then I'm gonna get more towards the cerulean. And these colors I'm just going basically straight off the palette with. I'm not mixing any medium much with it because I do have this synthetic brush. And now I'm gonna go towards ultramarine and cobalt blue and just get on this side of the shadow right here with that. And then go back, wipe that off a smidge, then go back to the cobalt more. I'm going to introduce a little bit more white right here. Kind of get it very closely matched to what I already have. Because I do like those tones. And this puts another little layer there, which I like because that's nice. It's tight. And it looks more, the paint looks more interesting. You know, just the thickness of it, just the presence of it. Which, okay, I'm going to clean this off on my pants leg. And I'm going to just blend all these now. A little bit, a little bit better. Okay. Just a little bit okay, more. Okay, how's it going, everybody? Um, I'm into...
Okay, that's looking pretty good right there. And uh, I could just wipe this with this brush, with this rag. I'm gonna just go in with some straight white right here. Nothing else, no medium, no nothing. I'm, just, I'm gonna just hit this right here. And it's gonna automatically pick up some of this um, some of this blue that's already on here. Okay, that's good enough. Now this blue down here is dry, but it's got a little cobalt mixed with white. And I want to hit this so I get a little blending going on between these two. And it really needs to be more straight cobalt and cerulean, so that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> looking pretty good.
going everybody screen if you're in the studio or if you just want to talk but you just want to sit there and be on the live and chill with me definitely you know go ahead and do it you know we could be we could be social media buddies there's nothing wrong with that you know and now that everybody's quarantined why not you know you can't socialize any other way really or unless okay maybe i'm not the type you socialize with so i understand that i understand that you know it's all fair it's all fair um
do things. So my name's out there, but it's kind of in some, certain circles. Not any big circles, you know, but certain circles. I mean, amongst people who need to know, I guess, you know. But why not just more of the public, you know? Why not? And what the new, I think the future is uh, social media, actually. Tell you the truth. I think that's the future. I think um, it's already changed the way uh, elections happen, the way our political system happens. Unfortunately, right now, I think it's having a negative vote on the side because I think that's how Trump got elected. Basically, I think to a certain level, Barack Obama kind of got elected that way too. You know, he used a lot of social media. It was very new for his election. I think that was around what, 2008. So from 2008 on, we've been having some pretty weird, you know, uh, elections. I should say that in terms of type of candidate. Well, I'm not going to say Barack Obama was a bad candidate. I thought I actually thought he was a good candidate. However, I think at the same time, unlike the people in the president, let's put it that way, unlike him. So he was a good president, but he was just a very unlikely president. Unlikely. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to say anything negative about anybody president because, you know what, everybody likes somebody, you know? People like Trump. And right now, in terms of the way things are going, you know, politics, I don't know. I don't think there's any good politicians anymore. I just don't think there's any good ones anywhere. I think they might start out with good intentions. Um, but I just think, um, I think you can be bought. There are some people that's not getting bought, but those are just the minority, the minority of the minority. You know, everybody else is getting bought. So, I don't like to talk about politics too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get to, uh, I'm going to get to paint with the channel. And I've got my medium kind of all set up, got my, 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 my color set up, and I'm ready to rock. Now, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus probably a little bit on this collar, the base, and the pedestal. Because this, I don't know if this is dry yet, but I just painted on it. No, it's not quite dry. I just painted these. So I think I'm going to focus on the knee, the face, the pedestal, and the feet today. I might work on the scepter and some more in the body area uh, today, but I might save that because that's kind of like, you know, my finishing touches is basically where I'm at that level. So I'm going to get my example, my reference, I should say.
crowns just came in. And, uh, like that. So, I might not, I might do it later, but right now, I think this, this I might, I have to do it. I think I gotta go back. I'll be right back with the 